Hello everybody and welcome back to Purple Plays Mighty Number no. 9. In the last episode we took care of three more Mighty Numbers. Mighty Number no. 1, Number 6, and Number 8 I believe. And in this episode we're going after the final of the Mighty Numbers and my least favorite in stage and in boss battle, Mighty Number no. 2 Cryosphere. Pyro here, I'm in. Cryo's certainly done a number on the place. I'll be fine. But Beck, you'll want to really watch your step. This is one slippery situation. No you kidding. Are all set. System ready? Go! Okay. What's this? The main entrance is frozen shut! Beck, proceed east. I've located an alternate route into the waterworks via the reservoir. Alright, so here we have our water stage and ice stage. And we're going to skip this part of the level because by the time we make it over, it'll already be over. Well, by the time we dash over there, it'll already be over. Careful, Beck. You can see. Contact with any of that malfunctioning purification equipment could be fatal. Because I don't think they intended the water mechanics to be this uh, floaty, I guess. Spritzer! Who knows? Because this game is kind of designed for a speedrunner tactic. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead with Avi's weapon, just in case. Careful of this corridor. Careful of this little asshole, too. Because touching any of these will lead to certain death. Here's a little secret area. If you hold the attack button while using Avi's weapon, you'll be able to use the propellers. No to uh, hover down. This is crucial and the game doesn't really tell you unless you go into the tips, I think. So keep that in mind. You're gonna need it for a uh, stage later on. Cause I don't think you can pass it without using that ability. You know, I don't think I've seen this part before. Nope, never have. And I think that was an extra life. Yeah. Okay, you can like piss off. Here we go. Ugh. These weird contaminated we green go. robots. Shoot the gunk off of them so that they'll shrink. And don't dash in this area. Like in these areas, just jump. Take your time, because the frame rate's going to destroy you. It's not just the entrance. The entire place is like one giant ice rink. Ah. This is Cryo's handiwork, all right. Careful, Beck. You know how she loves her pranks. I know how she loves That's her puns, more... if you call them That's that. Like... I guess you can. Okay, so here we have a mini-boss. I'm gonna switch over to Pyro's weapon, which is a chargeable well, weapon. So they're gonna be playing hockey while you are going to be attacking them. The longer you hold the button, the more potent the attack will be, as you can see. But once we destroy one, the other's gonna get kind of pissed and shoot the ball. Faster. And so just keep an eye out where the ball is and act accordingly. There's only one way to get past all this ice. Burn right through it. Back. I'll get the waterworks back up and running. You take care of Cryo. So Pyro's gonna be going on ahead and ugh, damn it, get out of there. And I believe in a certain area he's going to defrost it so that I don't have to deal with all these ice physics. Oh my gosh. 
This game sucks when it comes to trapping you, because when you get trapped, it takes forever to get out. And it's really apparent when you fight the boss of this level. Because the boss can be a huge pain in the ass. See, look how long it takes to get out of there. And I'm mashing the hell out of that. Okay, let's try this again. After all, revenge is a dish that serves cold. Okay, so in this form of the fight, <laughs> Cryo is actually going to be doing some yeah, cover fire while these two are playing. Not much, mind you, but it's still annoying because she can freeze you. Just trying to get through this. Damn it! Be mindful of where she's going to fire and where the ball is. It's not too hard, really. And we're almost done with this level. That's what. Almost, anyways. Just going to take you out. I mean, the section of where I ended that boss fight is the checkpoint, and the checkpoint is when I end in this section. I know it because of this part right here. This part always is always just a huge pain in the ass. Let's see if I can. I'm just going to take care of you. Wait for him to fire, and then just dash. Take your time. No rush. Then dash over here. Alright, that's actually the first time I've done that flawlessly. The waterworks is back in business, Beck. All that's left is for you to flush number two. Um, honestly, I think the only thing he did was make the boss fight slightly easier, because I think that gets her at the ice physics in the boss room. I Cry could be him. mistaken. I don't think I am, though. So, he's not very much help. You just refuse to chill out, don't you, Runt? Well, I'm sure it's nothing a little cold shower won't cure. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my least favorite boss. Okay, so this is Cryosphere. She's going to be doing a water attack. And she's going to keep trying to freeze you. Stay at the edge. Yeah, die already. So just wait a bit, and then you want to dash to the other end. And you want to take out all the ice at the bottom. What the what? Not bad, oh. Runt. Now that we've broken the ice, time to give you the cold shoulder. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah. Oh, that actually went a lot better than I thought it would. Basically, her main gimmick is that she likes to use a geyser of water, and then when she starts shooting more of it, it'll freeze you, or it'll attempt to freeze you. And then, while she's on the ice tower, <clears throat> she's going to be shooting little ice balls at you. They touch you, you get frozen, and then she covers herself in ice and ground pounds you. She could be a very annoying boss fight for first timers. And for my first time, I got at least three game overs before I finally got the pattern down. It was even harder with Ray. Well, actually, no, it wasn't. I take that back. But it was still very, very annoying. So, all I can say, it's the patient game with her, in, anyways. I mean, with everybody, but with her mainly. Horrendous job, Beck. Come back to base, and then, uh, let's see. Professor, we're receiving an urgent call from Cherry Dynamics. 
I will patch it through. Sanda! Sanda! Oh, Sanda! Thank goodness. Great Graham here. <clears throat> Mr. Graham, what a pleasant surprise to hear from you. Drop the axe, Sanda. You don't like me, and I don't like you. But we need your help. It's our factory here. It's out of control. It's cranking out hostile bots, and we can't stop it. Confirming. Confirmed. Defective Cherry Dine robots are rampaging throughout the city. <laughs> Gadzooks! That is not good! We'll send help right away. Right, William? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. But, Mr. Graham, one question. What makes you so sure Blackwell is behind this? Sonda, who is this idiot? Who else would it be, boy? That smelly old fart is obviously out for revenge. Now stop asking stupid questions and send help! Whoa! Pleasant as always, that Mr. Graham. Did he get Sanda, a tan on his I'll face, or is it just me? The situation at the robot factory. You take call and find Dr. Blackwell at the prison. You mean go myself to the prison? Like, actually, physically go there? I suppose it's the only way to contact Dr. Blackwell under the circumstances. It is... Uh, but are you sure you don't want to swap missions? I, I think you, of all people, would, would want to see him, right? On the contrary, I'd be quite content to never see him again for the rest of my life. I'm sorry, could you speak up a little bit? You're mumbling at the end there. Go ahead and choose your next target. Okay, so... How should I do this? Okay, so we got two missions to do. Um, I'm actually... This is what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to start at the Vermilion Destroyer DLC thing. This is completely optional, but I figure I'll just show it off now instead of waiting till later. <sighs> I've heard him use the name Thunder before. Is that where he is hiding? We are being hacked by an outside source. They are trying to steal our location data. Dr. White, I cannot stop the attack from here. We need to neutralize the culprit directly. They have some guts to target us directly. Can you tell who it is? Checking their access location now. This is, it seems, to be coming from a Cherry Dynamics lab outside the city. What in the world could my former employer want? Beck, I need you to investigate this immediately. Got it. I will head that way now. You are all set? Like I said, this is a DLC optional meh. System ready? Go! Okay, so this mission you can start at any time, it doesn't matter when. As you can see, some of these robots have actually been neutralized already, and I can just start absorbing them. I needed that. No, you didn't. Oh. Oh, that's what it is. That's what the blue ones I've do. I've been watching you. You're a predator as well. A predator? Professor, a strange robot is... Beck seems to have encountered something. Professor, how should... Son! <laughs> Okay, so this is the gimmick of the mission. You are going to be fighting Ray in multiple um, <clears throat> parts throughout this level. Ray can be a little tricky. She likes to dash around, and that dash well, obviously is damaging. Um, and she likes to shoot a beam from her mouth. 
but she's not too difficult. But that's because you're probably going to be fighting her multiple times. Okay, so one thing I learned, and honestly I didn't learn it until real until dashing through all those empty husks, ooh, was um, the more if you absorb a certain amount of blue enemies, like if they just start glowing blue, you'll eventually get a sub tank. I did not know that, so I guess you learn something new every day. I guess the more percent or just the more robots you get, the <clears throat> the uh, easy, the faster it is to get. Um, ah, damn it! I thought it pierced. The easy, damn it! The easier it is to get an energy tank. So here we have quite a bunch of different um, robots. We have these bat creatures, which are just coming into view now. We have these weird uh, wires from the ceiling. And if you look in the water, you can see where it's bubbling. And we got these, like, zombie-ish uh, robots. Or, you know, kind of undead skeletal ones. Pretty interesting. Here we go! Break down some of these doors. Some of them are open a little bit. And uh, some you just have to blast through. And no power ups for me. Okay, so here she's gonna start shooting her beam, which is going to. Oh, God. Which is going to, uh. cause, I guess, some sparks. At the, uh. wherever she shoots it. Damn it! Here I am trying to time it right. Ooh, that was close. That wasn't. Damn it, just go down already. And that didn't work out so well. I'm gonna try brand. doesn't seem to be working all too well. I kind of just go with the buster with this. Because she's not all that difficult. When I first did this, um, I did it before tackling any of the bosses. So I don't consider it too tough. But she is fast, I'll give her that much. I died a lot in this area my first time playing because there's a lot of weird moments where the frames just like skip and ugh. see like that. I I don't know what it is. I think it's these stupid enemies. Here, what hit me? Seriously, nothing hit me there. What is hitting me? Oh, oh, the bats are on. Here we go. I thought nothing was hitting me. I thought that was just another flaw of the game. Might be. See, look at that. I hope that got in, because that wasn't... That shouldn't have happened. 
That's all the more reason why these things aren't in the game. Like, in the regular game. into it, but apparently that didn't count. Sprinter. That's more like Okay, I found out how to get up here. You just gotta do a whole bunch of jump dashes. That might help because screw this area. Amazing! Oh, and then there's the amazing. That's more like here, here we go. Enough with the drop frame. See, look at this. This is retarded. That's more like, like, how could you fuck this up so bad? It's just a DLC mission, too. I wonder why it's a DLC mission. Seriously, this is just unacceptable. you near him in this state. You're completely out of control. You will tell me exactly where I can find him. Or I will tear it from your cells. Oh, Rachel. Rachel. I didn't know her full name was Rachel. I, I mean, the game just usually refers to her as Ray for sure. So if uh, her appearance doesn't show by now, she looks a lot like Zero from the Mega Man X series because she's supposed to be the Zero of this game. She is a melee fighter after all, too. Uh, one thing to note is that that little cape of hers is actually made of cells, and her uh, comment earlier suggests that she can do the cell, the acceleration thing too, and that's true. Oh god. That dash is actually a move she can use. Now, yeah, this is all completely optional, but the thing is that if you were to complete this, you can actually play as her in her own campaign, which is the exact same as Vex, only with one less Only with one less stage, but we'll show that off in just a bit, too. Okay, so I pretty much got a game over on her, but upon looking through or just experimenting in this fight, apparently the ice sticks to her the most and deals ongoing damage, which is what Cryo's weapon usually does. It seems to be working the best and slowing her down too. So 
So, if I had to guess her weakness, it's, well, Cryo's weapon. How convenient, since I just got Cryo, too. Unidentified robot. A female wearing a red cloak. A red cloak? Our database has no robots on file matching that description. The enemy's gone for now. I'll return to base. Good work out there, Beck. Let's go over the details once you're back home. Go ahead and choose your next target. And with that, when you enter the, um... The stage select, Ray was unlocked as a playable character. And at the top, you can see, well, Ray. If you click on her, then you'll start her campaign. I'm not gonna do her campaign. I'm going to just continue with Beck, and that's where I'm going to end it with Beck. Actually, you know what, because I don't want to cut the video short, but I don't want to do these two missions, I'll go ahead and show you the intro stage for Ray, just to give you an idea of what she's like. You said in the subtitle. Maybe the Colosseum would have enough. Will the lunatics never tire of seeing their toys smashing into each other? Hmm. Sonda Technologies. That name certainly rings a bell. Perhaps I should try to learn more. So, this is Sonda Technologies. Noise! A familiar sound. There's something about the screams. Almost... beautiful. I have no stake in this human crisis. But it should make for an excellent hunting ground. So basically, with uh, Ray, <clears throat> she takes over as for what Beck's doing. I mean, the crisis is still here, but there's none of the tutorial, and she could care less. There's no dialogue from the professor or Sonda or Call or anybody to annoy you. It's just you and the, just you and her. And one thing you're noticing is that her attacks are pretty much killing these things with no effort. They're not even glowing to show their cell case and, or to show their like weak their weak bleh. they're um they're not highlighted to show that they could be absorbed because the thing with Ray is that she is so powerful and all her attacks are so powerful that she can assimilate the cells off of all the robots without having to wait to dash. Her claws will assimilate them and even her dash will just do it. Sprinter. Like, this is your best bet for speedrunning if you're a master at this game, which I don't think anybody is. 
her dash can damage and she can do a three hit attack with her claws. However, if you notice one thing, look at the health. It's full, right? But now it's going down, and it keeps going down. The gimmick with Ray is that uh, Ray is constantly destabilizing. That's why she keeps saying that she needs to hunger because uh, she constantly needs cells to survive. If uh, she doesn't have any, she will die. That doesn't mean that if you were to wait the entire time while the health bar is depleting, it won't instantly kill her. But she'll be at rest. She has rare health, kind of like in a fighting game, as you can see. If she gets attacked, that red health is gone, along with some extra damage from her health bar. So, potentially, if you're not attacking many enemies, or if you're letting a boss go on for too long, and you make one mistake, then you will get hit, you'll get killed in one shot, most likely. So, keep note of that. Ah, damn it. Uh, Ray can do the same things that Beck can do. She can dash down, she can do a low dash or a crouch dash, and climb onto ledges. But she's definitely more powerful when it comes to absorbing others. She can also grab uh, sub-tanks or excel recoveries. She has no dialogue with any of the bosses, but I believe they'll still show their little thing with their name and all that. Now with Ray, it requires more strategy in my opinion to fight these guys because <clears throat> you can't go uh, shooting because she doesn't have a projectile. I mean, she can get some in the form of some of the boss abilities, but not all of them. And not all of them are like, good, good against bosses. This is what happens when she beats a boss. You can't actually use her laser Mission. at all. It's only for Fire. killing a boss. And she does have her own abilities, just like Beck. <clears throat> They're not so much forms, but basically her claw will change into whatever suits um, or whatever's related to the boss she kills. I would go more into it, but I'm just showing this off only, so don't expect much. These haywire machines, they smell different. Taste different. There's something about the cells in these Sonda robots. Something familiar. I can't help myself. I want more. Yes, more. I must have more! That Japanese art. Dedication to robotics. Hmm. Probably the same sort of sentiment he would say to me. Heartless monster. Could there be some connection? Some reason these Sonda cells taste so familiar? Hmm. The more I feed, the more I will learn. Go ahead and choose your next target. So once when you beat the intro stage, you can automatically go against all the other mighty numbers as Ray. Uh, like I said, if you're going to be playing as Ray, just go for number six. He's the easiest to fight. Otherwise, the first one I took on was Pyrogen, and he was a bitch to take out. But then again, everybody is pretty difficult to take out with Rey, because she's a melee fighter more than a ranged fighter. So it requires a little more thinking in how you attack. She's definitely a lot more powerful than Beck, but she's a glass cannon. She may be able to dish out a lot of damage, but she can't take any. Uh, so use at your own risk. But now that that's done, I have no reason to show off any more of uh, Ray, aka Mighty Number Zero, I believe. Go figure. She even has a zero on one of her earpieces. 
but I'm getting ahead of myself, kind of, not really. But that will conclude this episode. So <clears throat> next time on Purple Plays Mighty Number no. Nine, we're going to be taking hold of a new, another new character, playable character, in the form of Call, and we'll, we might be finishing up the rest of this game after completing the Robot Factory and one more stage afterwards. I'll see you guys next time.